Most people in life are looking at how to make a life worth living and return with having. When we're entertaining ourselves, when we're scripting a idea for a film, when we're putting together a scene for a theater workshop, or when we're working on something for our own private time, that's our work. But when we are employed as an employer, we are fully responsible for all the relationships, all the agreements, and all the things going on in a store. I know, it's a lot of pressure. So we begin with the fact that an employee of any industry has laws that regulate that industry, and that most employees either know that information going into a, their job interviews because they've looked it up, what might be applying to me here, or they learn it in school for that industry because it's a part of the methodology of training them for the career, or openly they discover it on the job through on-the-job training and natural casual talk or actual on-the-job training that's planned in what is, is and isn't expected of that employee to do. On top of that, you have strategic alliances. Strategic alliances are best and easiest explained as the vendors, say, of a product store. Every vendor that is vended within a store may come through a distribution house, but at the same time it comes from a vendor company. And vendor companies have principles. They have industry standards about their packaging. They have industry standards about how they're shown in, and presented on a shelf in a store. They also have codes of ethics for their employees and the corporations which they choose in which to put their vendor products. So we have those laws, those agreements, and those, we might even call them treaties, and articles of agreement that are responsible, or I should say, are accountable to an employee. Beyond that, we of course have company policies, company code of ethics, and just proper codes of behavior based on the competition and the marketplace of what is expected by the consumer. You see, I can walk into any fast food restaurant in America and expect a certain level of behavior from the employees. If the industry in general has gone downhill in terms of the professionalism of their employees, then I can expect a bunch of badass behavior. But if we do our industry correctly, if we move ourselves in our position professionally, then we really do know what is and isn't appropriate on the job. So my story the other day about how a young black 16-year-old boy wanted to abuse my rights to get my money back that blew through the window as we're waiting for his little th stupid ass to come and serve me at the, at the window as they had done almost every evening practically for the last several weeks, if not months, I had a right to be a little bit miffed off. I also had a right to be pissed off that that employee on behalf of his company thought that he didn't have the right to hear the beratement that he deserved for his attitudes towards me as an employee of that international company. On top of that, his marvelous attitude of I'm not going to serve you now in a way of discrimination was pretty much what got him probably fired or made him leave the last job at the previous company in fast food. In both cases, I believe it was a major lack of training and a very poor manager who handled him at the door on the onset of him walking into the beginnings of his career. Because that's all a kid needs, is to be fired from several jobs because they just don't fucking get the rules of the world. That life is about service. Life is about putting your little emotional behaviors aside and doing your job professionally. And only if you're going through a marvelous divorce, or only if you're going through some major loss of a person in your life like a death or whatnot, do many companies offer you any extension of grace? Because the day-to-day -day shit you deal with with your children and your family and whatnot is sort of displaced. And while you might talk about it casually with some colleagues and you possibly could talk about it with some customers who you regularly see who've already exchanged those sort of pleasantries, those sort of first words of welcome and greetings, and then you get into the social aspect of living of tell me about your family, tell, and they talk about it as a wife, or, you know, customers do that, and therefore it opens the door for your employees to do the same thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's how great relationships and great friendships and great loyalty to your company begin. But at the same time, what has to happen with employees is for them to remember that if they met someone as an employee of a company, and then they start to do stupid things 
outside of the hours or even within the hours of their employment at their company that they can put their entire corporation into a lawsuit. They can put their entire life on the line in something stupid they thought they had the rights to do. And here's the deal. Corporations can use their security offices to review your cell phone if they're worried. Corporations can evaluate your positions with all types of secret choppers that you would never understand and never see as employed. Corporations can put in any other employee from the corporation to check your behavior on the job. So while you think you're so super and marvelous in getting away with all the shit you pull, be clear, corporations don't do that at all. What we also know is that bad bosses often in hire, hire stupid little shit employees, and I hate to call it like that, but I call it like I see it, so that they can blame the employee for anything that the boss does and anything that the employee does. Even if the employer says, on the local level, so what? Go for it. Do whatever you want. Take that. Do that. Be that. But at the end of the day, what can really happen is that everything in your life can fall away because you made a bad choice on behalf of you and your employer. You see, at no time does that employee and customer relationship stop. Because what really happens is that you met them originally that way. So they're going to always associate you with that employer. Now it's true, if you get fired or if you quit and you go someplace else, the people who you knew through that other space might see you, might run into you, and be okay with you. But they're always going to originally associate you with that original place. And then they'll start associating you with the new place, and either way, you're still beholden to the fact that you are an employer, sorry, you're an employee representing an employer presenting yourself to a consumer.